everyone, this is three questions with Jamie Fowler White. See, I told you. I got buttons, sounds, everything. I told you. Yeah. Music. All right. So I'm like really blessed to have Jamie Fowler White uh, on the podcast today. It is, we are recording this on a Saturday, which I actually am shocked that I even got in on your Saturday because like we were talking before. You do so many things. It is actually it, just incredible. Uh, and, and so if you know a little bit about uh, Jamie, she actually has uh, several books out, more and tons more are coming, it seems like, too, right? Like, I love it. Um, so she has a book on reflection. It's called Education, Educator Reflection Tips, volume number one. Um, just wrote a, a book with your husband, The Labyrinth of Leadership, Navigating Your Way Through the Maze. You can actually find both of those in, in description. I'll tell you. Like, I actually know a little bit about you, like, through social media and stuff like that. But just talking to you before, like, I just love you. I just love your stuff. I love your, your, it's just amazing, right? And so, like, you talk a lot about reflection, which is, I think, through this podcast is, like, a really powerful thing. So, I'm really excited to have you on here today. I am excited to be with you on this yeah. wonderful Saturday morning. <laughs> wonderful Saturday morning, right? And, and go and go Tennessee, right? Like ten, just Tennessee. Yes. Tennessee. I know. I know you're not. We. I asked you how much you're just for because that's like a prerequisite. I asked everybody that, but Tennessee football is doing pretty good this year. It is. It is. All right. Yeah, I love to. Yeah. See, I love to. Yeah. Love to see it. All right. So Jamie, you are you are very focused on reflection, and that's like kind of like all of these questions, all the stuff. This podcast is all about reflection, which I which I'm really excited to talk to you about. So you look back, you're currently a principal. Um, you actually have, <laughs> when I asked you, you basically have done every job in education. So you have tons of different roles. So you look back at all the teachers you've connected with, you know, either people you worked with or someone you had as a student, who is a teacher that inspired you and why? Mm. Well, um, my actually, it was a teacher I had. So my first grade teacher is my most inspirational teacher. Um, I often tell people about um, my struggles in kindergarten. I absolutely hated school. Um, but when I got to first grade, my teacher just one day, she um, she did something really weird. Um, she called for another student to come down. She called the custodian down, told him that she needed like a different kind of desk. Um, my parent... Um, uh, worked in the building. My mother was an educational assistant. She called her over, told her I needed like a special pair of scissors and all this other stuff. And I'm just looking around. And what she discovered was that I was a left-handed student and I had mm. gone all the way through kindergarten trying to do everything as a right-handed person. And I couldn't, I couldn't do it. I couldn't cut, I couldn't hardly write and never could. My teacher just never really noticed, but my first grade teacher, her name was Miss Bryant. She actually um, gave me the big fat left-handed pencil. Mm. Uh, um, I still remember the left-handed scissors had like a green um, overlay on them. And then she had a left-handed student that she had had in the past come down to show me how to hold my pencil, mm. and help me to write because she said that she couldn't teach me how to do that because she was right-handed. And so the best person to help me was a left-handed person. And it was a third grade student that actually came down to help me learn how to write. And so I talk uh, to people about how important it is to observe your students, to get to know your students, because I went mm -hmm. through an entire year of kindergarten and my kindergarten teacher never noticed that I was writing with the wrong hand. So, um, I talk about the invisible students. I was a quiet student. I did exactly what the teacher said. I right. didn't make any kind of waves. So I could be, I was that student that you wouldn't even notice unless you really wanted to notice. Um, and uh, she's made the most impact on me because I try to make it a point to talk to every student and get to know every student mm -hmm. because I don't want anyone to feel invisible. Um, my teachers tell me now they're like, we've never seen like a principal like you, like every child feels like they can come up and talk to you. I said, but they can. I try to, I try to talk to everyone. When I go in a room, I walk around to every student. If there's a line in the hall, I speak and hug every child in the line. Like I want every child to know that mm -hmm. we see them, they're valued, they're important. And um, 
when I told them it was something that I missed in some of my um, elementary years, middle and high school, I didn't feel like my administrators sometimes knew me like they mm-hmm. should have because I, I wasn't the most outgoing student. Right. I wasn't on the student council, the class president, those type of things. Like, I think you should get to know like every child. And so um, every day I work towards that. I even go in, um, my secretaries know if there's a new student, they call me out so that I can introduce myself and talk to the parent and the student um, before they even start their journey at my school because I, I want to make that connection um, with them. I, I, there is like 10 million things like I want to say. I have actually never, so it's weird. I've never had anyone ever share a story that they, didn't realize they were basically left hand. Like I've never heard anyone say that. And that that is absolutely so I gotta give a, a little shout out. Ms. Brian. That's, that is amazing. Uh and, and it is like there's there's a million things I want to share with you. I think the, the 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 thing that really sticks out to me is that a lot of times when we look at education, it's like uh it, when we talk about like helping kids, you know, find what they're passionate about, find but it's actually it's also part of it is that it's it's a helping kids see the gifts within themselves that already exist right and i think that's a really powerful thing is that sometimes it's like bringing out something in them and that they're tapping into and that's really powerful i one of the, one of the things i was thinking about is like when you're talking about a lot of educators that you know we work with i've there's there's sometimes like you need to be like up on you know get up on your desk and you know you got to be like super in your face and like you know like decorate your room like harry potter and stuff like that i'm like that's not me like and and don't make me into that and i i actually it's great to have you know people that are passionate about that stuff who you know get up on the desk and stuff like that too but i think that all kids actually should have different opportunities to be exposed to different ways of teaching and see like that teachers have different gifts in the way and like some of my best teachers were like super you know uh like loud and funny and you know tell jokes and some of the best teachers i had were like very quiet and they brought out stuff in you it was like it's just different right and i i don't like when like we all should be the same i think that that to me is something because because what does it tell our kids too right like like, that's such a powerful thing oh i love that story that i i'm (laughs) I was almost like kind of like going off to the side. Like I do not want to start crying here. Like that, I actually that was like amazing. I had no clue that was. I, I know. I'm like sitting here. I'm like, have I done that to a kid? I didn't know that was a thing. Like I just, I, 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 I get it. That's, that's amazing. So uh, I, I love that. So now you, I love the story that you share as a as a parent. Um, you saying that you make sure you greet families before kids as a principal yeah you have i'm going to tell you something when we're not recording about that later but that that meant the world to me and so obviously i love that approach as an administrator so when you think of all the admin that you've actually had um mm-hmm. in your career who's someone that really inspired you and why hmm. oh i've had so many um I guess I'll talk about um, Celia Moore. Um, She was my second principal. Um, And it was and it was just an accidental thing. I was looking for um, a school to teach at, and she teaches at a school that's three stop signs from my house. Uh, Mm -hmm. So she was it was like right around the corner. I was like, I've never. I've never actually taught in my neighborhood. So let me uh, see if there's an opening. And so uh, she called me. Uh, I applied <clears throat> and she called me on the phone and she was like, I have a position in the shorts if you want it. I was like, I don't need to come in and interview. And she was like, no, um, it's yours. I, I read your resume. You're perfect for the school. Come on over. And so I don't know. There's so many things I love about her. Like she created like such a family type of atmosphere. Mm-hmm. Like when we go, we would go to faculty meetings every week. Like she would feed us. We would have chili dogs, nachos. That's like it was like we were having dinner together, right? right. Yeah. Um, but one day she brought me in uh, her office, and she handed me this letter, and I was like, "What is this?" And she was like, um, I'm going to send you to um, this class. They're doing a series of classes on data. And 
you probably don't know it right now, but you're gonna need it later. And I was like, yes, ma'am, mm. I'm gonna go to this, I'm gonna go to this class. And so I went, learned all kinds of things um, on uh, data. And interestingly enough, um, as I um, applied to become a principal, it was my ability to dig um, deeper into data than most people could that mm. our superintendent said, oh my God, like I've never seen anybody break down data like that. Mm. Like, and I was like, it was um, just a thing. I was a third year teacher and she saw something that I didn't know I had that, I, that she knew I was gonna need later. Uh, she would push me to lead things and do things to present. She's part of the reason I actually uh, have right. been presenting for a couple of uh, decades. Like there were different things that she saw. Her personality was soft. She didn't have that big booming voice. Uh, so she wasn't um, that um, the typical principal, um, you know, that you would see uh, back in the day, they would pull out the coaches and they would become the principals. Mm -hmm. And they were just, you know, those those domineering uh, male figures. And she was just soft, easy to talk to, um, well respected. Like, and it was, um, it was amazing to work for uh, her. And I tried to uh, infuse um, some of the things that she uh, she did. Um, and people are not used to that, mm -hmm. um, but. Um, I told him I, it takes all of us to make our school great. And so mm -hmm. I want us to all feel like, like we're a family. Like there's nothing you can't tell us and we'll work through it together. And so I try to uh, infuse her qualities. Uh, she went on to uh, like be the head of our exceptional children uh, department. Um, we had like a fully inclusion uh, school where I had like a teacher assistant and all my special needs children were with us like all day, um, mm -hmm. not pulled out unless they just needed to be. Um, and so it makes you look at um, like children with disabilities in a different way. And, mm -hmm. and when people say, no, they can't be in that class. Yes, they can. Mm -hmm. They can't if they have all the, all the proper supports. They can be anywhere and do anything. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, um, it prepared me for a lot of things. Um, while I was with her, I had my son, and my son has um, multiple disabilities, whole different conversation. Um, and so um, it made me fight, uh, you know, mm -hmm. harder for him, you know, as he was going through his schooling. And I would tell people, I understand that you previously probably had, you know, some kind of plan for children, but my child needs something different. So we're gonna all have to mm -hmm. come together and um, decide what's best for him. But you cannot put him on any plan that you've had for other children. Right. Um, because he doesn't fit into that mold. Um, and so so I think Celia Moore, she's she's my my Celia, my, my Celia Moore. Celia Moore. <laughs> Get one of those. That it's actually interesting how aligned your administrator story is to your teacher story, mm -hmm. right? Like how powerful it is to hear um, that that it really is the same thing. There's like finding the gifts and how valuable that is. And I, I, I appreciate you telling the story about your son because I think uh, there is a book is I, it's a I can't remember the, the the name of it. It's Malcolm Gladwell. He talks about like David and Goliath, and one mm -hmm. of the exceptions is basically. David is a, such a powerful story because it's the weak beats the strong, but it's actually, uh, they talk about Goliath actually was really slow, couldn't move around as quick. Mm -hmm. And so what was perceived as just like brute strength was actually, uh, David was very nimble, quick, could move around, was good with a, w good with a slingshot. So it was actually seen as like him having, um, him having like strengths that we, that, that many people had perceived as weaknesses. And so he actually talked about uh, one of the conversations, I think it was uh, people with dyslexia um, often become uh, CEOs of companies because they learn to be so uh, uh, focused on small details. And it's actually, it was just a really interesting thing too. I, I, will, uh, I will admit, I love, one of my favorite things in the story 
was that you measured distance by three stop signs away. And I like, that is like such a small town thing. I like, that's how we used to bet. I, when you said that, that was like me growing up in small town, Canada. That's like basically how you measured stuff. I like, I couldn't have told you, I could have never told you miles or kilometers, but I could tell you stop signs. I'm not a math person. Um. <laughs> that's totally, that's totally, that's totally math. That's math. Three? Oh, that, that, yeah, that, that's as close as I could get. Mm. I love it. I love it. Like that's like that is it's amazing because like if you live in those in a smaller town growing up, you like know exactly how far away that is. Like, that's amazing. I love that. I love that. So, um, having a one of the things that I, I'm noticing just all the conversation, I I can actually. I, I'm gonna say I can see your wheels turning. Like I, I'm actually watching the process of you reflecting, and I know you're so really passionate about that, which is like really kind of interesting, right? Like I can, it's like kind of like internal. You like absorb the question. I need to get better at that. Like I, I love that. So I, obviously, you're. This is a, why your expertise is in this area. So looking back, so this is like probably the most reflective question. You can go back, you know, to the beginning of your career, your first year as a teacher. If you could talk to Jamie, then what advice would you give to yourself? <laughs> um don't take life so seriously. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I mean, I literally was striving for perfection, like yeah. from the jump. Um, yeah. I think it was my sister's fault. Um, she took me to uh a session my very first year, um, and it talked about everything you needed to become a nationally board certified teacher, you know, the highest mm -hmm. right. honor a teacher can have. And so, like, from that meeting on, I was like, oh, I'm not doing it right. I got to do this. I'm not doing this. These are, these, this is what I'm shooting for. And, and I literally, I mean, I think I worked myself, like, to death. I would get up on Saturday mornings mm -hmm. and work on my lesson plans and plan out all my lessons. Mm -hmm. And, like, I did that for years. Um, and I would, like, have my son. He would be sitting. I um, cut off. Um, an old computer keyboard and so i would be sitting typing and he would be sitting on the side of me with his little keyboard pretending that he mm. typing and stuff like that's what no. he thought um right. he was supposed to be doing he said oh mama's typing i'm supposed to be typing right. like um and um so i think i probably should have just relax and enjoy the ride but i literally was like seriously working for yeah. it because i said the best teacher this is what they do and so that's what i want to do and i was working 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 for it and um i remember being so upset when they told me i had to wait until at least my third year before i could apply mm -hmm. and i was like no i can do this i'm doing right. that like and um so i would just tell myself to relax i don't have to be perfect right um and uh, everything will work out um, hmm. because I, I don't know if I was as relaxed as I should have been, like in those first few years. Um, my first year was a little bumpy. That's a story for another day. Um, but, uh, because I had to change jobs within two weeks of working. Right. So it was like, I got comfortable and then I had to move. Right. To a whole different school. So, yeah. Okay. So even uh, even even when you are even when you are striving for perfection, right? Like the world doesn't play that way, and I think that never, like, never. I, I love, I, the, the advice. I think again aligns with what you talk about. I think one of the conversations I've had with you know educators for years is that if you know exactly on October tenth at nine thirty a.m., this is where the kids will be at math before ever meeting the kids. You're doing it wrong. Because you don't, it's like kind of when you talked about your son, you haven't even met the kids. They might be ahead. They might be behind. And when you say little things like, oh, we need to teach, you know, I need to get through the curriculum. Well, that's a you thing. But you might have got through the curriculum. But do your kids actually understand the curriculum? Those are two, those are actually two different timelines. So you can get through the, right? So we kind of got to think about that. So I think a lot of times we are so strong, like get caught up in the idea of perfection as an educator that we actually will we will actually forego the kids in front of us to stick with the plan, the plan that we spend so much time developing. Whereas we kind of just, you know, I think there is like a power and just kind of like, Hey, like chill out, just relax. 
get to know the kids they'll that their their abilities and gifts will help lead the way and you figure stuff out right it's always good to have a plan but you gotta you gotta be comfortable moving away from it too so i love that this, this is awesome i'm gonna you're gonna be stuck with me for like the whole afternoon i'm missing like every yes. football game <laughs> I love it. I love it. Jamie, hey, thanks so much for being on the podcast. Everyone, if you can actually check out, um, I got Jamie's books uh, in the description down below and uh, just loved having you on. So please, uh, I can't wait to talk to you more today. I'm looking forward to it. So thanks so much for being on. Thanks for having me.